Jimmy. Hello, Zero. Ew, not a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have makeup on today. Yesterday when we talked on here, I looked like an earthworm. I feel like zero is kind of a lost insult. It is, for sure. Like that, it fucking hurts. What an absolute zero. What an absolute zero. What a nothing. What a nobody. <laughs> we are resurrecting zero. What else do we resurrect on here? Oh, when I said get lost. Get lost. Get lost, hey, zero. Get lost. get lost, zero. Dang, that's mean. <laughs> that is pretty just fucking no, mean. <laughs> no swear words. It's just cutthroat and shitty. Yeah, you're just not needed and you're not worth anything. What are you drinking on? I'm drinking coffee, because, cold coffee, because the rest of my life is just boiling to death. I know it's 81 in my house right now. I feel like I'm going to die in my sleep. I think I told you my thermometer outside melted. Oh, yeah. Not good. I was thinking about going to the grocery store today, and I was like, I'm going to ride my bike. Literally rode two blocks, and I was like, no, this is dumb. I'm going to go back nope. home. <laughs> nope. And I ran to the pet store today and got peanuts for the babies. Oh, that's good. But when I was when I turned around and came home, I was like, but I really need to go to the grocery store. Should I go to the grocery store? And then in answer to my question, like right as that thought went through my head, like, should I go? Should I stay? There was a huge fucking clap of thunder and lightning. And I was like, oh, no, I guess I should go home. Like, that was my answer. Yeah. It was, a million, it was a million degrees and then it was like going to downpour or something. Yeah, I mean, it probably would have felt good, but I don't trust either of us to not get struck by lightning. Also, uh, when I was riding my bike, I don't know what this means. I think it just means I'm getting older. Uh huh. I started having real anxiety about falling off of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I heard the wheel kind of scraping and I was like, if that pops right now at the speed I'm going, I'm gonna die, like hurt myself bad. And then I was like, found myself getting closer to like the grass and I was like, but that's still not gonna hurt. Like, I'm gonna fall yeah. off this bike and die. That's what happened to Simon Cowell recently. He had some kind of motorized scooter and he fell off and broke his entire back. Can't fuck around. Yeah, I don't know if I'm just too in my head or, like I wanna reclaim that childhood elasticity hero, nothing can kill me. But like when I was cruising down the road, I was like, all of a sudden I thought to myself, like if this hits a tiny rock, like I'm gonna flip. <laughs> That's a sign. That's They're a sign. Coming to get me. That's a They're sign. Coming to get I know you're gonna fall off your bike. That was weird. That was weird. I stopped doing dangerous things when I started tattooing my legs because I can't, I'm not gonna do something and skin my knee off and lose part of my tattoo. The guy who did my knee is from fucking, well, where is he from? Norway or some shit. It's not like I can have him fix it. You know what that made me think about? What? Our do, you friend? Know what do you know what Vitalego is? Yeah, the Vitalego? Yeah. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. The Michael Jackson thing. Yeah. Why are yeah, you, you have Vitalego? Why are you because laughing? you said it weird. I said it the way I learned it when they told me I had it, asshole. <laughs> Whatever, Zero. Get out of here. Get lost. Get anyway. Lost. So I have it on my leg. I have it from my knee down to my ankle on my left leg. Did you know that? Yeah, I did know that. All the, hair on, all the hair on that leg is white. Yeah. And you can't see the spots anymore because when I was like 12 and 13, their cure for it was they would uh, have me bleach my skin every day. Not good. And then the next thing they wanted to do, and my mom told them no, was they said, well, what we can do is we can freeze all of the top layers of skin and then chip it off. And then, and then it'll scab over. And when it grows back, it probably won't be back on that where we chipped off the skin. No, I don't think that's how that works. Well... The reason I thought about it was because when I was like 13 or 14, I skidded out on my bike and slid in shorts on that leg and scraped the whole side of that leg up. And when it grew back, it didn't have it on it. Dang. Weird. So I guess it worked somehow. 
If I scrape my face off, will I get a new face? Hopefully a better one. I know, right? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way. I think you end up looking like Jason. Ooh, that's how I look. Um, you think that Jason is afraid of how he looks? That's why he wears the mask? I don't know, man. Like him you and Michael. Like Michael okay. Myers does it because he's scary. Like he's dressed up for Halloween. I guess. Michael does it because he knows he looks weird. Yeah. So that's kind of sad. You know what I realized the other day that maybe, and I, I think be, whatever I'm fucking trying to say, I think I like horror movies because I have super bad anxiety in real life. And okay, so I, let's say most days people worry about like bills and health insurance and fucking their shitty job and whatever and their relationship and their parents and whatever so you have like real life fears that are like anxiety inducing and terrible but then i feel like when i watch a horror movie i'm just like in this thing that like isn't real so i can be scared of that for a while and not think of my own problems so it's like oh there's a guy with a knife that's not that real and then you like escape your own problems i did a podcast this week and one of the things I talked about was I think that the reason people like certain movies is because they are controllable dreams. Like you're sitting, you're not moving, you're not doing anything. You're watching fantastical things happen in front of you that you know aren't real. And unlike a dream, like you can pause it, you can get up, you can walk away from it. You can choose if you want to have a good dream or a horror dream. Like movies are the are like the best types of dreams and i think that's why people like them yeah that's true i had just out of nowhere but i had this dream the other day it was so fucking real i don't know what house i was in but it was supposed to be my house and it was so haunted like i remember in the dream my dad was over and there was like this tupperware bowl that like lifted in the air in front of me and then there was this like bluetooth speaker or something and it was like pushing towards me and I was pushing it away with all my might and I go dad look and I let go of it and it like smashed into me I'm like that's how hard I was pushing it away and so many more things happened like that in the dream and the the cutest thing happened in the dream like we got out of the house and I looked at my dad and I'm like you wouldn't believe me if you didn't just see that would you and he goes yeah I would I was like oh it was like so cool it was so real it was so real and, and i remember in the dream after i got out of the house i was like i have to fucking move like it was that bad like everything was like flying through the air i'm like i can't stay this is not fixable which i feel like i wouldn't do in real life but it was pretty bad in the dream i haven't had any weird dreams lately it was i've had all sorts of weird dreams i've had a lot of we had this conversation too how i told you like I keep meeting like dudes in my dreams who seem like real people or like people I would actually like or have a crush on or go out with. And I'm like, why am I having all these like relationship dreams? And then you said something weird on our road trip about it being like, or I told you I hadn't had any dreams about being and it was fucked up because he was my whole life. So why haven't I seen him in my dreams? And then you said something weird about it being like, being presenting as my dream dudes or some shit. What did you say? Yeah, like, <laughs> well, no, like, if Bean doesn't have to be tied to the physical form of Bean anymore, why couldn't he just present himself as your dream man? I know. That's so weird. That looked really like fried my brain. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. And, then, this, you, and then, then you're in the dream and you're like, who is this dude? Why do I love him so much? He's like yeah, the best. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because there's such like a deep connection in the dreams. And I'm like, wait, I feel like I know this person, but I don't. Like, that makes a lot of sense. And I've always said that, like, Bean felt like a little human man. Like, he didn't feel like a dog. It was like a man. Yeah. Bean boy. Bean boy. I know. That's fucked. That's going to continue to fuck me up for a long time. <laughs> like, in a good way. I don't mean, like, in a bad way. But that was like, wow, that's some shit right there. I also thought it was funny that I noticed, I guess, and I'm sure it happened on every road trip we've ever had, but I noticed it specifically on this road trip that, like, I feel like people, obviously people on Twitter and like people that we know and people that you've lectured for already know that you're like the smartest man on earth or like very well versed in a lot of topics or like people like say that like Dos Equis commercial where that guy's like the most interesting man on earth, like that's pretty much you. 
But like, so I think people think you like mostly talk about spooky shit or aliens or whatever. But like when we're in the car, you'll just literally throw out the most mundane information. Like we'll be driving and you'd be like, you'll throw me a fact about corn. Like literally, that I've never heard in my life. I'm like, how do you fucking know everything? Like you were you talking, talking about, about corn. Are you talking about knee high by the 4th of July? Yeah, who's ever heard that in their life beside a farmer? Me, because I've you gotta know, like this is, listen, you know this and people who know my lectures <laughs> know this and you've heard it more than anybody else because you've heard so many of my lectures. Like people ask me all the time, what books should I read? What do, and I'm, I always tell people everything, everything. Cause you never know when that information is gonna be important. Well, no. Sometimes I, I sometimes I sit around my house and I'm I'm looking for something to read and I don't know what to read, but there's like stacks of books that I'm really not interested in, like airplane mechanics and car magazines and stuff like that. And sometimes I choose to flip through those and read those because all of a sudden, like I'm reading it and I'm like, oh shit, this is super interesting. Like this guy who created this carburetor joint was the same guy who developed this thing that has to do with this UFO case. Like, just read everything. Yeah, it was like- Be interested in your fucking world. I know when you told me, even though it's like one of my favorite movies, when we were at the Stir of Echoes house, you told me that it was like written by that guy who wrote a bunch of episodes of Twilight Zone. And then I told one of my brow clients today and she was like, no shit. So like that stuff passes on too. Like, yeah, Richard Matheson. And yeah, then there we go. I, I sent you today, I sent you the other day, I sent you that uh, video clip of Richard Donner because the director Richard Donner died. And he mm -hmm. was he was talking about how he wouldn't let Goldfish get hurt during the filming of The Omen. And like people love Richard Donner because he made Superman with Christopher Reeve, like, and people were like, that guy was kick ass. But again, like Richard Donner also made that episode of Twilight Zone with William Shatner on the plane and that thing looking in the fucking windows, that's Richard Donner's episode. Like that's the episode that people talk about like all the fucking time. Like that just, that dude had something going on. I didn't know that. I just have too much Twilight Zone information. I know you do. I love that video though. That was so freaking cute. It's so great. I know. Well, say what he said for people that. So when they were filming The Omen, there's a scene where they have to have a goldfish bowl fall and break and donner told the staff and crew like we're not killing goldfish for a movie like nothing's gonna actually die for this movie so they went and got sardines and painted them gold <laughs> out of a sardine can and put them in the bowl and dropped that bowl instead that's so I great know. now everybody's gonna watch that movie and notice that like the goldfish are like skinny <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do you remember that you texted me like a few nights ago at three in the morning and asked me if it was my fucking birthday and it's like four months away from my birthday and you've known me for a million years? By the way, <laughs> I do remember that because it was only a few days ago. And by the way, you asked me a couple days ago, when are we going with your sister on her, my sister's little vacation? Yeah. And when, when I pulled up my calendar for August, it said August 4th, Jessica's birthday. Why does it keep saying it's my birthday? I have no idea. I mean, that's fine if you want to give me stuff, but nope. <laughs> that's weird. I know my that your birthday- My friendship is gift enough. Oh, brother. Uh, I know that your birthday is always around Paracon and then people bring you presents to Paracon and we always give vodka. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got alien vodka. There was something else I was going to say when you brought up Paracon. I thought of something and now I can't think of it. We kept talking. I was just going to say something too and I forgot. Oh, how? Okay. We always talk about how a lot of times when we do this, we don't even fucking remember what we said or like don't pay attention to the fact that anybody's going to listen to this. And then last week we do an Omega show, whatever. And then the next day you do, oh, I see a text and it says, I don't think either of us realized how drunk you were last week. And I'm like, oh. What did I say? Like my life flashed before my eyes. I'm like, what did I say? But then I heard it and I'm like, that's not that. I don't, whatever. I don't think I said anything that bad. You were just talking very fast. I talked fast. You were talking very fast. And there were some instances where you were talking over me a little bit. And then there was some flibberty jibberty flub flubs that I might've edited out. 
<laughs> to your benefit. <laughs> I you know. I didn't there were, I, listen. There were a couple of times, literally, and I could I could find the original file. There were a couple of times where you were like, "No, dude, listen, I gotta, I, I, I don't know." So I took those out because <laughs> you did well, it. That's how we are. You did it, we I know, but you person. did it more than a couple of times, and I was like, "Ooh, this is getting a little hard." I don't know. I'm sorry. I always just pictured us us at Gus's, just like vibing out and yelling and getting excited. And then when I'm on here, I'm like, "Oh, there's like a." There's like a flow. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But at the bar, I mean, that's the thing. Like when it's not recorded, you're right though. When when you're live in person, there is a flow where you can talk over each other because I can still hear what you're saying and you can still hear what I'm saying while we're both starting the next sentences. It's just harder to do when it's recorded. Yeah. Oh, I was going to bring up too. Um, the thing that I tweeted about I watched, have you ever seen the movie Eugenie or Eugenie you, no. by Jess Franco? No. It's Okay, Christopher Lee's in it and it's three years before he did Wicker Man. So he looks real good. He has like a red suit on the whole movie. And I'm doing the tongue clicking thing. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Are you drinking? Yeah, just a little. And I have Red Bull in it. So that's bad for everybody but um so anyway this movie is screwed up i don't even know why i put it on but it sounded interesting so i put it on anyway so the premise okay when you read about it oh i don't know where to start anyway okay the premise of the movie is there's this rich guy and this and he has a young daughter who's like they don't even say she presents as like 17 or 18 years old then they show this like really pretty blonde lady who presents as like maybe 28 something so the premise of the movie is, or whatever. So how it starts is the rich guy, and I don't know if they live in different buildings and the guy can like see the blonde lady and like fantasizes about her for a while. But so they're finally, they like, then they cut to another scene and they're like, he's like, I've wanted this for so long or something and blah, blah, blah. So um, so the, the blonde lady has met his daughter somewhere. I don't even know if they say where, but they've met somewhere and they, they've been carrying on. How have they been writing letters or talking? I don't know what it is. Or maybe the blonde lady sought him out because of the daughter. I don't know. Anyway, you have you, to watch. You it. need to write move. You need to write movie recaps for. That. I know. I really should just be on IMDb right now. Anyway, so but listen, so the guy, the lady says that she'll only sleep with this rich guy if she's allowed to take his young daughter on vacation to an island, and and he eventually says yes. So then they sleep together, and then she just whisks this man's young daughter off to an island, right? So when you read about the movie online, oh, <laughs> sorry. So anyway, so when you read about the movie online, it says that this other man on the island is the blonde lady's brother, which makes everything going forward really screwed up. But when I'm watching the movie, I don't know if they ever said that it's her brother, but regardless. So if we're to understand that that's her brother, it's fucked. So anyway, so she gets to the island with this young girl. They like have an outside dinner, blah, blah, blah. They drug this poor young girl. Oh, I forgot a part. Anyway, this young girl has been reading works by the Marquis de Sade. So she's like thinking about crazy shit in her head and like thinking about exploring shit. And I think that's why she's talking to the blonde lady because maybe she wants to hook up with the blonde lady. I don't remember. So anyway, so they're at this dinner and they drug this poor young girl and then they take her, but it's the crazy part is it's filmed so cool. Like it's all red. It's done in like red lights and like blurriness cause she's like drugged. So they're in this bedroom and the brother bro, quote unquote brother, whoever the fuck he is. And this lady do stuff to the fucking young girl and like take advantage of her and whatever. So then she wakes up the next day and the girl's like, I feel like weird stuff happened last night. And she's like, it was awful. And then she goes, but it, maybe it wasn't like, cause she's into this all Marquita Saj shit at the moment. So anyway, so when it goes forward a little bit, they have another dinner, they drug her again. Then all these weird like bondage people come out of nowhere and Christopher Lee is in the corner, just like weirdly narrating, but he looks hot, but it's like, why are you even here? And then the bondage people go after the young girl, start whipping her. And then like go forward a little bit more. I think they brought the young girl to the island to kill her, but then they end up killing the blonde lady and then that's it. Is that the weirdest thing you've ever heard? Told that way it is. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I know. 
<laughs> like, okay, technically it's a really screwed up movie and obviously don't do that to anybody and it was fucking weird as fuck, but it was like weirdly beautiful and like, I'm glad I watched it because now I can tell people about it, but I it was one of those movies where you get done watching, you're like, what the fuck did I just watch? Is and it- there's another one, there's like a sequel and then like 10 years later, he like remade that first one. So like when you talk about the Eugenie or however you say it, movies, there's like three or four of them and that's the first one. And it's on Amazon and you can rent it if anybody wants to do that. What what stage is Christopher Lee's hair in in this movie? It's real good. It's like it's like how he looked in Wicker Man, but it's more slicked back. Like he looks but that's what I want. That's what I want. Yes. You would yeah. Yes. It's per- he looks perfect. The height of Christopher Lee for me is The Devil Rides Out. I don't know if you ever seen The it. Devil Rides Out? I don't think so. He's got a goatee. His hair is perfectly slicked back three-piece suit like and he's an occultist like it's the best he's the most handsome he's ever been i think he's better than looking than dracula that's how he looks in this movie he has like a red maybe velvet suit on like maroon suit the whole time and he just like lurks around and looks hot christopher lee was amazing i'm surprised like i'm always i guess this is the jadedness of everything I would have assumed everything that Christopher Lee did for as long as he was in the movie industry, all of the weird, like he was a Knights Templar, like he sword fought, like he did all this weird stuff. He was in the war. Like you would have thought that like someone had some shitty stories about what a terrible person he was. Nope. Like, it seems like he was just a good guy. Yeah, I was looking at, obviously I Googled him after because I wanted to see what other phases there were. And like, even when he was like a freaking billion years old, he was still handsome. Yeah. He aged like really well. Yeah, but I feel like he was one of those guys who he stayed Christopher Lee until the last two years of his life. And then like age caught him. But if you watch, I mean, he was, he must have been 80 something years old when he made Lord of the Rings and he was like probably late seventies when he made star Wars movies and he looks fine. He looks old, but he looks fine. Mm -hmm. If you look at someone like Peter Cushing, Peter Cushing looked old when he was like 30 years old. You watch him play Van Helsing against Christopher Lee's Dracula. They're the same age. And Christopher Lee looks like he's, or I mean, excuse me, Peter Cushing looks like he's 10 to 15 years older than him. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Maybe Christopher Lee had some weird secret Knights Templar magic. You know that he was a Knights Templar. He was like, weird mystical realm like i'm pretty sure that christopher lee was some kind of an occultist he had to be i think he that's was. probably why we think he's hot like it adds to it you know why Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes for sure yes yes i gotta shave i'm getting starting to get a beard it's looking gross. i like it it looks good it's so hot it's so hot I having know I was extra hair for- on my face is not helping I know. I wish we were rich. I was thinking I wish we could just like go stay at a hotel and like lay around in the air all night, but I don't have money for that. Who did I know that used to do that? Someone I knew used to do that when it would get hot or like they would just go and get a hotel room and hang out. Yeah, I want to do that. I love hotels. Can't remember who that was, but someone I knew in my past used to do that. Somebody tell us that you have a, a deal with hotels and that we can stay there for a discounted price. I have Dude. a deal with a local hotel for my brow business, but it's only 10% off. So listen, the last time that we recorded, uh, for anybody that's listening right now, Jessica and I spent two hours trying to get Del Taco, but Del Taco was closed everywhere we went. All the locations were closed. It was so fucking frustrating. We ended up going to White Castle and sitting in the White Castle line for seven hours. <laughs> we had so much fun though. We did, but it was so frustrating. So today I tweeted at Del Taco because they had a tweet that said like, today make yours Del. And I tweeted at them. I was like, I tried to make mine Del multiple times at multiple locations, but they're always closed. Are you guys out of business? I'm trying to give you my money here. So then they they tweeted back at me, please use this online form. So instead of doing that, I tweeted back at them again, no, I'm not using your form. Here are the two locations. Maybe I shouldn't have to do your work for you. Then they, didn't, res- then they, didn't, then they didn't respond. 
Yeah, then I got off. Okay, they usually the one by us used to be open for 24 hours. Then I got off work tonight and I told all my clients, I'm like, I'm going to go to Del Taco after this. I'm going to go to Del Taco after this. I was like losing it for Del Taco. Get there. Oh, it's fucking closed again. And I realized when I sent them their, those tweets today, I have more followers than Del Taco. <laughs> <Stop that. laughs> well, suck a ring pop, Del Taco. Yeah, suck a ring pop, you zero. We, there's got to be a better way. We can't go to Taco Bell because we got sick as fuck. And Del Taco is never open anymore. What are we going to do? I don't know. You know what I did no. today? DoorDash. First time in history, old man Tenny used DoorDash. Downloaded an app. <laughs> what did you get? I got Thai food. Nice. I, Jealous. Thai food with tofu and spring rolls. And it was delicious. And I ate it all. And then I fell asleep immediately afterward. <laughs> I haven't had Thai food in a minute. It was so good. I felt like a beast. I was eating it like a beast. At one point, at one point, the fork wasn't getting it to my face fast enough. So I just started using my hands. <laughs> with Thai food? It was rice. You can't eat rice with your hands. You can scoop it. Your hands are a little spoon. You have a, you have a problem. The heat has gone through No shit. Brain. Are you just figuring that out? <laughs> I'm an old man. Ooh. I can do whatever I want. Ooh. I'm 50. I'm 50. Why did you waste your record store story on twitter because it was the, the anniversary it was in july uh 33 years ago when i was working the short version of the story is i was working it off the record the record store in downtown royal oak and we had a band come in from a different country they couldn't speak english very well their manager told me i was going to be in charge of getting their drinks and food for them so i got them water and fruit and then i came back and they were all the customers were getting their stuff signed and the band was arguing and the manager told me they're talking about candy. And then he said, it's candy that comes out of heads. And I said, are they talking about Pez? And as soon as I said Pez, the band went fucking bonkers. And so I ran down to the store. I bought the whole box of Pez candy. I go past the line of people getting their stuff signed. I walk in. As soon as the band saw me with Pez candy, they fucking freaked out, jumped over the tables, flipped the tables over, threw shit everywhere, came toward me. The lead guitarist started to grab the box out of my hand and the lead singer went to punch him in the face. He moved, she punched me in the face. I fell down, she grabbed the candy. They And the, the record store signing was over, like it was done. That was the end of the record store signing. It was mass pandemonium. And the band was the, called the Sugar Cubes at the time. And the girl that punched me in the face was Bjork. Yay! <laughs> she must have been the cutest thing ever alive at that point. I haven't, I, you know, I should have done the math to figure out how old she was. So it was 33 years ago. She was old. She's older than me by a few years, I think. She just seems so tiny and cute. Oh, she was, she was tiny, but it was one of those things like, I think specifically, like when I think the tables were flipped over and stuff, that was because like the guitar player and the bass player were kind of bigger guys and it was them trying to get around to the tables. And I'm pretty sure she just came over the top of the table because she was small enough to like scurry over the top. I wish I could have seen that. There were so many crazy things that happened at that record store because we did in stores all the time and the two owners were just, I don't know how they were so well connected. There was, we did an in-store with Sonic Youth one time. Uh, Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth were there. And then we closed the store because they had a show that night. And we closed the store. And then we were waiting for Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore's like ride to come and pick them up and take them down to the Latin Quarter where they were playing. And we got a phone call at the store that their ride wasn't coming. And so the owner of our store who had called and said their ride's not coming, he was like, just drive them down to the Latin Quarter to me. He was like, just drive Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore down to their show. You have to do it. At the time, I had like a Plymouth Horizon. Do you know what those are? Nope. They look like little egg cars. They were like the first wave of hatchback cars in the 70s, like tiny little cars. And mine like didn't have a floor. It had a steel girder where I had put a bump. There was no bumper had fallen off. So I put a steel girder on the front of the car. It was a trash car, like trash. And Thurston Moore is like six foot eight. Like he's five or six inches taller than me. So he's like smashed in the passenger seat next to me. Kim Gordon is in the back of my car. I'm praying it doesn't break down or run out of gas on the way to the Latin Quarter. It was 
ridiculous that I was driving them to the show in this garbage car. And then we got there and they gave me backstage passes and I hung out with them and Red Cross and had a great time. Dang. I love that. You know what's funny? You brought up a record store. I used to work in a record store too for like the longest time. We had a bunch of in stores too. I'm sure I could talk about that. But I remembered specifically, and I don't know why this memory flashed in my head today, but like the record store I worked at, the owner was fucking out of his mind. I feel like he was a cokehead towards the end. I'm not sure if that's real, but I think that was a thing. But anyway, the owners just... of my the owners of my record store were both cokeheads. Yes, is that just a thing? Yeah. So he he always had like rage, right? He would like be in the back all day, and then he would just come out and rage and go fucking back in the back. So anyway, so this lady came to complain about something or return something. I don't fucking remember what she was doing, but I distinctly remember I was behind the registers and it was over to the left. And and we, you know, radio to him, or not radio, you know, called back there and was like, this lady wants to talk to you. So he comes out and we couldn't really hear what they were fighting over, but it ended with, he got so mad at what she was saying. He was holding a pen and he fucking snapped the pen in front of him. And it's, she was holding a fucking baby and the pen sprayed all over the fucking baby. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Holy shit. Holy shit. The first, the first day, I can't begin to tell people if you've never, people that ever worked at record stores in the eighties or early nineties, there was nothing like it. Like there's, and there will never be anything like it ever again. My first day, first of all, I got a job at the record store because I used to hang out at the record store all day long. And there were two owners, Rick and Lee, and Lee would fire me like twice a week. And then Rick would hire me back like three times a week. Like, that's just how it went. I would go, you're fired. Fired He'd go, you're fired. Go. This happened for years. Lee would go, you're fired. Get out of here. And I'd go home and Rick would call me and say, just come into work tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I'll handle Lee. But the first day that I worked at the record store, they told me you got to come in on Saturday. So come in Saturday afternoon. There's a guy named Itchy was working. He was in a band called Shock Therapy. And they were like, you're going to you're going to do Saturday night. You already know how to close. You've closed two or three times with other people. This will be your first time closing by yourself. So I go up there first night alone. I get there at like five. I'm only, I only have to be, be there for like three hours. I open up the front door. There's people in the store. Itchy is nowhere to be seen. So like I start ringing people up because I can't go in the back room because I don't want to leave people alone with the records and they're already alone with the records. Like 15 minutes into being there, I hear Itchy come out of the back room and he's like, hey man, and literally has a heroin needle hanging out of his arm. What? Yes, he had been in the back doing heroin. No. And then he left. I mean, what do we expect from a guy named Itchy, but... <laughs> oh my God. Oh, record stores. Yeah, I got fired from mine twice, too. It was usually... Anytime I've ever been fired from a job, it's usually for being late. And I think it was... I don't fucking remember. I think it was for being late. And then they were like, do you want to come back? I'm like, yeah. And then I got fired again. I don't remember yeah. why the second time. I got fired all the time. The One of the greatest... Sto- I mean, there's so endless stories about that record store, but... We used to have a obviously it was the 80s so we had a ton of bootleg material like bootleg cassettes and bootleg seven inches records whatever and then across the street was this store called incognito which had a ton of fucking bootleg stickers and t-shirts and just a ton of stuff so i'm in the store i think it was a sunday and this guy is coming across the street and i can hear people screaming from across the street and it was all the people who worked at incognito screaming at this guy and this guy is stomping across main street coming toward my record store and he's carrying a giant box full of fucking shit and he comes in the store doesn't say anything to me blows right past me goes over starts putting records in this box starts putting like all these seven inches in the box and then he like he's like i want to see the cassettes and i was like excuse me sir and he's like give me the fucking cassettes give me the cassettes and he's like over by the cassette he's like i'll break this fucking glass right now and take these goddamn cassettes and I was like super, I'm all by myself. Like, I didn't know what was going on. And it was Glenn Danzig. Mm-mm. Yeah. It was what? Glenn Danzig. What was Glenn he Danzig. doing? Glenn Danzig was in town for a show. And he was going from record store to punk rock t-shirt shop. And he was taking all of the bootleg materials because he wasn't making any money off of it. And so he wasn't going to let anybody, you can't make money off my fucking name. And he was taking everything. This is the most Danziggy Danzig story I've ever heard in my life. 
And so he did. It's he took so like all of our Misfits records, all of our seven inches, all of our cassettes. He had a box full of T-shirts from Incognito and stickers. And we just let him take it. We were like, what are we going to do? And then we are, they're bootlegs. We can't really do anything about it anyway. And yeah, if you went into some paranormal store and they had all your shirts and your posters, you'd be like, I'm fucking taking all of this. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's his. We're not supposed to have it. Let him take it. Yeah, we had a ton of bootlegs, too. And the thing is, that's the other thing, too. So that that's that reminds me of, like, when I worked at Borders or when I worked at any corporation and people came in and they were pissed off about shit. Like, my managers could never figure out how I diffused situations so fast. And it was because... I don't fucking care about the corporation. Like people would come in and they'd be like, you, this fucking book sucks and I want my money back. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Or they're like, yeah. I want, I want, I'll, I want this. I want to exchange it for a different book and I want a gift certificate. And I was like, okay, like whatever. Well, <laughs> we've already talked about this before too. And from working retail for so long, we already know that you end up zeroing out so much shit and throwing it in the garbage. So what the fuck do I care if you have another one? Who cares? Have it. Yeah, that's why, that's why it drives me crazy when I go somewhere like what if when I used to go to like whatever Target or Marshalls or whatever, and you, the poor hourly worker is like, I don't know what I do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, let them take this shit and go fuck home. Like, who cares? No one's going to... 20 fucking years from now, someone's going to care that you, this guy didn't pay for a fucking sweater? Let him go. Right? Or, like, if somebody drops something and you have to damage it out, like, who the fuck knows? Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. I know. I don't care. There was a guy who was at TJ Maxx one time, and he dropped this, like, snow globe, and it smashed on the floor. And this lady came over and started yelling at him that he was going to have to pay for the damaged merchandise and stuff like that. And I was standing there and I was like, this guy is in the damaged section of TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> Everything at TJ Maxx is fucked up. Everything at TJ Maxx is from somewhere else that was damaged and they sent it to TJ yes. Maxx. This guy yes, did you like a yeah, this guy did you a favor by throwing this piece of garbage in the garbage. <laughs> Right. Working at places is terrible. Excuse me, sir. That originally seventy dollar snow globe that we had marked down to six ninety nine, you just broke it. You're gonna owe us that six ninety nine. I like your voice. It sounds like somebody in Animal House. It sounded kind of like Jerky Boys to me. Oh yeah, Jerky Boys. And then I just got Welcome Back Cotter vibes too. Wait, this has nothing to do with anything. But did you see that guy in Warren the other day that purposely blew up his own house? No, but you did come up with the tagline for this podcast. What? This doesn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah, that's literally the whole thing. That's our whole podcast in a nutshell. <laughs> but no, there was like a huge explosion and they were showing different uh, videos of it on the news. And then I saw a story today that like they think like the guy did it on purpose because he wanted to kill himself. It's like, geez, that's elaborate. So he blew up his own house? Yes, and it damaged a bunch of shit. Or maybe it was a condo, and it blew up, it, like, damaged a bunch of condos around it. I don't remember. But they showed his picture on the news, and it looked exactly like somebody that would blow up their own house. <laughs> 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 it looked exactly like someone from Warren, if you will. I was at a paranormal convention maybe, like, six or seven years ago, and there were a bunch of us outside the hotel. It was, like, the VIP after party or whatever, and we were all outside and kind of drinking and smoking cigarettes. And that we heard like a huge explosion, just massive, and it, like a bomb went off. And we ran, like it shook the whole, like I, we felt it and heard it. It was crazy. And we ran back inside the hotel and, and everybody was looking around and we didn't know what was going on. So, you know, nothing seemed in the hotel to be burning or exploded. So back to drinking and hanging out in the bar and the bar had television sets showing sports games and stuff. And all of a sudden, all of the television sets switched to like a nearby neighborhood where um, a meth house had exploded. Wow, where the fuck was this convention? In Indiana. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yep, sure. Indianapolis, I think. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy because they showed the meth, like, this was at night and they already had helicopters and lights and stuff. And like the whole fucking neighborhood was gone. Like one house, Dang. like just demolished, like the, the, all the houses around it. It was crazy. 
Well, I was going to say the craziest fucking story happened today. One of my clients, um, I'm not going to, I don't think he listens to this anyway, but I have a tiny crush on this guy who lives, you know, that guy I told you about that lives in the middle of fucking nowhere, way yes. out West. Yes. yes. So, so listen, the craziest thing happened today. I'm working on my client who I've worked on before. This was like her touch up appointment, right? So she has this cool tattoo on her arm and it's like an eyeball. And I'm like, that's sick. And I was like, where did you get that? Cause it looked like this local lady's work. And she's like, oh, I got it in. And she says the town that he lives in, which is super random. And I go, wait, this is fucked up because I'm like, I have a tiny crush on this guy. And ever since I have, I see this town name everywhere. And just yesterday there was like a movie special on and there's this movie that came out and it's based in this town and it keeps happening. So I'm like, that's so fucked up. I go, this guy that I have a crush on right now lived there, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, well, how do you know this guy that lives way the fuck out there? And I said what he does and like kind of his social media presence. And she goes, wait, what's his name? And I said, and she's fucking went on a few dates with him before and she knows him. And we both literally fucking died. Like he lives so far away like this is like seven states away from here there was no reason we were cackling i'm like we need margaritas right now i'm like <laughs> i don't even know how to finish your fucking eyebrows right now like i was dead and like i'm like so i was like asking everything i'm like because i've never met him before and she's like well the good news is he's super handsome in person i'm like i knew it so there's that so at least he's not a like, catfish ass but like she told me some stories and now I'm like, this is very interesting, but I'm not going to tell him, but is it the, what are the fucking odds? What are the odds? Dude, dude, the, throughout our lives and the things that we do, the interaction and interplay between people that know each other is the thing that blows my mind the most. There is no way, like, there are so many artists in this state, in this There country. are so many people in the world. Yes. Like she could have went to anybody. And also I thought it was cool because I had her scheduled for last week or whatever the week before. And I, I rescheduled her so we could go on our trip and she was cool as fuck about it. So that was cool. And then like, I had been staring at her tattoo the whole appointment and I almost didn't say anything. And then me complimenting her tattoo leads to her telling me where she got it. And then that like, what, what? Years, this is back in the nineties. I had this friend Jimmy and his nickname, I used to call him Scoey, Scoey Lopez was his nickname. And I did a fanzine and I needed an extra page in my fanzine. So I just put this thing on the back of, I mean, and fanzines back then I was making maybe what, 50 or a hundred copies of a fanzine out of Detroit. Like that's it. But the back page was send me a dollar to join the Scoey Lopez fan club. And I put a picture of my friend Jim. And for a dollar, you would get a membership card and I would send you a Xerox copy of his latest um, report card from high school. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was, that was what? what you got from the Scoey Lopez fan club. Like that and was And he's it. just a stranger that nobody knows. Just my friend, Jimmy. Like nobody cool. knows him. Cool. So I put out my fanzine, like seven people joined the Scoey Lopez fan club. Like seven people send me a dollar out of the hundred <laughs> fanzines that whatever. And I send them Xerox copies of his report card. It's so dumb. But it was so fun and just whatever. Years go by and I'm in a coffee house and my friend Jim comes in and he's like, I've been trying to track you down all day. And I'm like, why? This is now like, like I said, this is now three years later. Mm -hmm. His Jim Scoey Lopez, his brother, John had joined the Marines, shipped out in the Marines, went through basic training, got stationed in Washington state, went to a bar was talking to some girls and said, they asked him where he's from. And he said, oh, I'm from Royal Oak, Michigan. And one of the girls goes, do you know who Scoey Lopez is? <laughs> and he goes, Scoey, he goes, Scoey Lopez is my brother. And she's like, what? I got this fanzine from Detroit like three years ago and joined the Scoey Lopez fan club. How does that even fucking work? No, I have no idea. How's that? That's insane. I love that nickname. What the fuck is Scoey short for? What does that mean? <laughs> I wish, so we were at Denny's one night and I had, my nickname was Trout and then my friend was Weird Buckaroo and then there was King Lenta, Sammy Davis Jr. Jr., Apathomith. We all had nicknames and Jimmy didn't have a nickname. And I, for some reason, earlier in the day had been at a toy store and looking at like baseball cards for some reason. And there was a baseball player whose first name was Scoey. 
And so I called him Scoey. And then I don't know where Lopez came from, but I got, just called him Scoey Lopez. And then, you know, obviously the derivative names out of that Scolando, the Scomeister, the Scoateer, yeah. like all those names. But like Scoey Lopez just stuck. And it's such a funny nickname for some reason. I don't know why it's so funny to me, even all these years later. I love, like, Scoey would be such a good name for a dog or like a hamster. Scoey Lopez. Scoey Lopez. <laughs> I love that. I think you know, I think you know Scoey Lopez. I think you've met Jim before. Who the fuck is Scoey Lopez? At uh, Jim, he goes, he's at Gus's sometimes. He The nurse guy? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's Scoey Lopez. Oh my God, he has the best <laughs> stories. He has, he would come into the bar I worked at and tell me stories of the stuff that they pulled out of people's asses in the ER room. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I just said ER room, emergency room, room. Anyway. Look, you know Scoey Lopez. Oh my God. And he's worthy of a fan club, isn't he? Fuck yeah, he is. Just for his fucking hospital ass stories. I know he would tell us about pulling light bulbs out of people's buttholes and stuff like he that. He said one time somebody had to have a, something extracted and it was a fucking orange. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Who that. Who sticks an orange in their ass? Yeah, he told me one time that they had, there was a guy who had two toothbrushes up there. Oh my God. That the guy put a toothbrush up his butthole and then he tried to use another toothbrush to get the first one out and the second one sucked up in there. <laughs> that still nothing's as bad as an orange. Why would you, okay, if you're sitting there thinking about stuff to shove up your ass, you would think of long things. You don't think of a fucking ball. What the fuck? I can't. And you don't think of a ball that's easily squishable. Yes, and something that like, if you hurt yourself, it has citrus juice. Can we not? Ugh. Oh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> my face is all red now. So oh. is the guy who put orange up his bubble. I like how some, one of our listener people before was like, I was at the, somebody said on Twitter today that they were at the dentist and when they, they had us in their earphones, right while we were talking about hotel sex on our last episode and she's like i hope the dentist doesn't hear this and now she's going to be somewhere else hearing us talk about somebody shove an orange up their ass no shame no sh whatever that's what you get this is a mixed fucking bag <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying if putting an orange up your ass gives you joy i don't know who's there we're not to judge whatever yeah do it go for it what you gotta do didn't we say we were going to say some Patreons at the end of this episode and we didn't I, write any down? I forgot down. to write them down and print them out. I oh, know, we'll say it. In the, next, the next episode, episode I'm going to do all the Patreon shout outs. Yeah, you're going to read them so fast and we'll talk I'm about I'm not going to read them so fast. I'm going to read them one at a time and you're going to give each person a nickname. Oh my God, yes. Yes! Wait, did you see, I posted on our Patreon today too about people to give us ideas of what to do for Patreons and some of them were so good. I have to look at it. I haven't looked at it. Listen, somebody, this is my favorite, new favorite thing I feel like. Somebody's, <laughs> I can't, I think it was Dawn, uh, suggested that we go to a sad carnival. <laughs> <laughs> I will just video ourselves being just bummed out and vampire at a fucking carnival. I'm, I've never been so happy. I want to go on a Ferris wheel with you so bad. Oh my God. So yeah, it was a sad carnival. And then they said that they wanted you to be in a suit and they wanted us to play bumper cars or some shit. And then they really want us to play Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that shit. I could teach you really quickly how to play it. Well, I said what we could do was we, we could make a video of us drinking and just painting figures. Like, I can paint. I just what don't about, know. What, how would, talking about games, you know I have all of those, like, horoscope astrological board games? Like, yeah, I have Gene Dictum's prediction board games. Maybe we could play those. That would be so cute. Yeah. Yeah, you that's a that. good idea. I love sad that's carnival, really though. I've been to so many sad carnivals in my life. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That was like one of my favorite ones. And then somebody else said too, just like, and I don't know why we didn't think of it ourselves, but like, um, just like taking people on a video of our favorite, like local places, that would be so fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just like easy. So we always think it has to be a trip, but like it doesn't. We have so many like Detroit places that we love. That would be super fun. Yeah. I love, I'm, I'm sorry. And now I'm stuck thinking about parking lot carnivals. I know there's gotta be one. There's always one over by my, where my dad lives. Like, Every oh single time God. I go to one of those things, and this started decades ago going to parking lot carnivals, was walking around the rides. And if you look, so 
Years ago, a guy told me this and I didn't believe him until I started looking, but he said, whenever you go to those overnight carnivals or weekend carnivals, if you see a ride, look in one of the corner posts of the fence surrounding it because the people who put the rides together will choose a corner to put all of the parts that they can't figure out where they go. And if you go to those parking lot carnivals, every single ride somewhere near like the little fence that they build around it, there's a pile of nuts and bolts and like pieces of metal that are supposed to somehow be on that and aren't. <laughs> That's the worst tip I've ever heard. Yikes. <laughs> Man, and no one, no dark. one cares enough to figure out where they go, so they just put them there. That is dark. Well, we'll put that in our video, and there maybe was... not go on anything. Did you watch Jaws this weekend? Nope. I did. I know you did. Oh, I just forgot something. I just remember something I want to tell you. Remember on the road trip that you told me that Richard Dreyfus was going to be at a convention soon, and I lost my fucking shit because we're busy that weekend. Yes. Okay, listen. Not only. Is it Richard Dreyfus? but it's like a Jaws fucking group panel thing. And Chrissy from the beginning is going to be there and also Ellis Kintner. Where and is doing that like at? Indianapolis. And they're doing We're... group photo ops. We're not going to be there for that, remember? We're not going to be there. No. We're going to go to the one with Billy Zane. Oh my God. I'm going to rip my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I know I want to go, like legitimately, I want to go to that one. When was that, September? I think that one's in September in Chicago, maybe. You have to go. Is it? No, I thought it was like Atlanta or some shit. No, no, no. The Billy Zane one is in Chicago. We're going to go. We're going to eat Chicago Diner. Yeah. And then and you're going to put gonna... your tits against Billy Zane's face. Yes. Oh, my God. What am I going to wear? Oh. Yep. You're going to be able to grab and hug and kiss Billy Zane and... We have to watch, listen, we have to watch Titanic. Smash your, smash your hot mound on him. I will go. <laughs> listen though, we, we have to watch Titanic before then so you can fully understand. Ugh. I know. It's fine. It'll be fine. Right, I don't want to go You're now. You're literally going to love it is the thing. You're just fighting against it. Fine. Fine. You, you got anything else? People, oh, also in the Patreon thing, when I ask people what they want, they want, like, a lot of people said they want more of your Bible talk. I'll put together a Sunday service. Yes! Did you say any weird Bible shit when we were at that place in Chicago? Which place? The Basilica. The church? The Basilica? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't there think so. There was a Dracula Pope outside. There was a Dracula Pope outside, but I said, you, you know, when you were talking about local places, we could do, uh, inside of the church of oh, the shrine of the little flower here yeah i've never been there you've never been inside yeah they probably won't let us in but we can try i mean and did you know that the shrine of the little flower is supposed to be all paranormally well i know a, a fucking uber driver told me before that it's that it's called the shrine because miracles have been performed there yeah so there's i mean they're not actual miracles like People say like spectacular things have happened there, but there is some weird stuff about it. Like whether or not it's supernatural, first of all, a lot of people don't know if the way that it was carved, because it's a giant crucifixion scene. If you actually get out of your car and go up and look at it, it was carved so that over the years, like underneath Christ's face and Joseph and Joseph of Arimathea and Mary's face and all the people down at his feet, it was carved so that the water would well up under their eyes and cause erosion under their eyes so that they would all eventually be crying. Ah. And that's what's happened if you go and look at it now. It's really crazy. I think I've noticed that before. I haven't been inside, but I've definitely been outside and took pictures of it before. Yeah. I also know that's the street, but this is how I know <laughs> this is so stupid and I hate to bring it up again, but when I leave my work and I go to Del Tacos, that's the street I turn on to cut down to where you go to Del Tacos. So yeah. you have to turn right after the shrine. Yeah. And then there's a church on 13 Mile and Crooks across from a gas station. And mm -hmm. in the 90s, tens of thousands of people from all over the country went to that church because you could see Jesus and Mary uh, on the church, the front of the church. It was at night when the lights were hitting the cross, the reflection that it made on the wall looked like Jesus and Mary. So people thought it was a miracle. 
And then it got so crazy with people blocking traffic and sitting on the front lawn that the church went out and moved the light and then you couldn't see it anymore. <laughs> Dang. That's over where the Indian Trail is too. Yep, that's right next to the Indian Trail. Yeah, there's like a, isn't there a tree that was like one of those bent direction trees or what is over there? there there's a big rock that marks the path and then you can still see the path in the ground. Yeah, yeah, we walked, that was cool. Yeah. That was cool. That's cool. We, we did that on one of our birthdays. Uh, maybe it was my birthday. Remember we took Bean over there? Yeah. That was cute. That was cute. Yeah. I used to live over there. I used to live in apartments over there. I know you always pointed out the one behind the gas station. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wait, are we going to be late again next week? We have to go. No, we shouldn't be. We'll be home, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know. Okay, good talk. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Nobody leave us a bad review if we're late. We're just trying to live our life. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot. It's so hot. I know. I smell like yeah. an onion. Oh, yo, I smell like onions. I smell like an onion or a zoo. It depends on what I eat. Johnny L. Tenny's a little formal. May I call you stupid? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to call you stupid. That's how we end with me talking about how I stink and you calling me stupid. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.